guys, here we are with the Tropical Dragon Blood that I'm doing with people from all over the world. Amazing. You can see that my fermentation is complete. We're close enough to it anyhow. This is the bags of fruit. That's all that's left of it that I squished out. And what I've done, let me set this thing up. Is I have a clean carboy that is ready to rock and roll. And I have that set up to my uh, spigot over here. Where I'm going to turn that on and start transferring the wine to my carboy. And while that's happening, remember that Barolo I made? I'm going to be sipping on that. All right. So I'm going to show you guys. We have some sludge on the bottom from the yeast and the fruit. And on the uh, jug, I'm filled up to about here. All right. Which is a good thing because I'm going to start degassing now. And if I degas and the jug is full all the way up, I'm going to have wine all over the floor, which is not a good thing. All right. So I have a little bit of head space in there and I'm going to get ready to degas that. Alrighty then, we'll be back in a minute. Alright folks, what I have here is a drill mounted degasser. And there's a lot of different ways you could degas. I'm going to do this with this drill mounted device. I also have a vacuum pump that I could also use to degas, which is a wonderful device as well. Um, but, you know, some folks on the forum were asking about, you know, what can you do to degas if you don't want to buy this uh, device. Um, I think it's called a mixer. Well, you can make a poor man's one by taking a hanger and bending it up and putting it in a drill. Make sure you clean it really well and throw it in and use it in the same way I'm using this. But I would, you know, prefer to get, you know, the right device, of course. Again, the vacuum degasser is better for me, I think, than all of them. But, you know, since a lot of you guys don't have a vacuum degasser, I figured I'd show you doing it with this. An alternative to that would be to do it with a spoon and stirring it like crazy. But doing that, your arm is going to fall off. And that reminds me of the good old days when I was grating parm Parmesan cheese, you know. Um, but you can see this thing has some fins on the bottom that when you turn it, the fins spin around. You see that kind of thing? These fins. So, we're going to put this in. I'm going to put that in like this. And watch it spin around. Now, you guys have been stirring this every day. So there's going to be a lot less bubbles than in other wines. But you know what's important is to get all of the gas out. And what you'll notice is you'll start to see bubbles coming up from the bottom. Waves and waves of bubbles. I want to see if I can zoom in so you can actually see that. Action. I don't know if you guys can see these bubbles coming up. What's imperative is that you get all of the gas out of this or else it won't clear properly. So I'm going to keep doing this until I get all the gas out and it might take 20 minutes. Alright, so I'm 
Let's see if you guys can see any bubbles coming up. Now another thing you might want to realize is that the warmer this is, this wine is, the easier it's going to be to degas. So if you have it cold, it's going to be a little harder to degas like that. It's going to take longer. If it's a little bit warmer, then it's going to be a lot easier to degas. All right, so I'm going to be doing this for probably about 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and then I'm going to move to the next step. All right, guys. So now I'm going to be pouring in the Sparkaloid hot mix. It is a tablespoon to a cup of boiling water. I'm going to be pouring that in to the wine. And stirring that in. Well, what I'm also going to do at this point is fill up this cup. Put some water. Add that. Stir that in. <laughs> Can hear the battery is starting to go. And now that I have that taken care of, the last thing to do, besides clean everything up, is to take a top. I just want to make sure this one fits. I want to get a smaller one. I'll be right back. All right, so I got myself my bung, and I cleaned that, and I put my airlock on and we're not going to put that aside for 10 days before we rack off of the sediment and um, talk about back sweetening so in the meantime you might want to if you don't already have some get yourself some sorbet um, because most likely this is going to need to be back sweetened and um, we'll go through how to do that. You guys can look at my other videos on how I back sweeten as a helpful hint. Um, you can look at those videos. I'm going to be doing this the same way as I back sweeten. I think it was a Riesling I did that way and a couple of other uh, wines that I back sweetened. Um, even the dragon, the other dragon blood I did. Um, I also have a posting on my blog on how to back sweeten. Um, at least the way I back sweeten, a lot of people back sweeten in different ways. Um, please feel free to look at that and if you need a jump start on it, if you started this before I did. Um, so far things are going well and um, hopefully in about 10 days we'll be ready to back sweeten. So stay tuned. Alright everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. 
And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And um, definitely check out my blogs, www.cookingitalianrecipes.com, with the dashes in the middle. Or um, my other one on winemaking, how to make homemade wine.biz. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And have an awesome day.